Oh, what to do, everybody? Yeah, happy Monday. Woo, tired just going to work. Hope everybody's having a good week. It's a good Monday, start to the week. Uh, just wanted to come back and do a little quick video. The weather's kind of decent today, I guess. It ain't raining, it's overcast, a little chilly still. I'm not getting, getting not like freezing cold, but it's, it's chilly though. Um, supposed to rain on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, just just want to touch base on a couple of things, uh, mainly just primary home defense and uh, talk about different uh, different calibers a little bit. I mean, I know everybody know the basics, the shotgun, nine millimeter, hand pistols, all those caliber. But I did see a couple of videos and some people were kind of like saying uh, 22 is not a good weapon for home defense. I mean, it's all you got, man. You got to use what you have. So I'm not going to get into all that. but. So I just want to break out a couple of my 22s and talk about that a little bit. But first, I want to give a shout out to my boy James out there in Iowa. High, high alert. I've been, he's been dropping a lot of videos and out there in Iowa at the range with, with, with snow on the ground. So that was really unique. Cool to see that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Big Boy Noise out there in Philly doing his thing. Uh, he's always at the gun range. Like I said, I haven't been out, man. And I, I go to, like I said, I live in the city, so I'll, I got access to indoor ranges. I don't really have the money to do all that right now. I'm still stockpiling ammo. Like I told you, I'm trying to get to my thousand, thousand, thousand. The only way I can do that is by not going to the range. And then when I get there, I'll, I mean, I'm gonna go eventually, but I just can't do it right now. So, uh, and then I'm also, I'm gonna be uh, going out to the desert with my buddy Chip. Uh, he, we, we got some stuff he's working on, building some steel targets and stuff like that. And he got a couple of courses he's gonna diagram some courses for us and do some practical stuff it's gonna be light man. it's gonna be it's gonna be lit man so like man y'all just stand by just wait i know it's been a minute but just wait i'm like if y'all go back to my older videos I, I used to go to range all the time and shoot but i used to uh go by myself so it, uh, the videos weren't all that great so now my wife's into it and so now i got some more in the video so and shout out to the lakers got that win last night big win against dallas i'm gonna put too much on it but we got to go 17 and 6 down the stretch to make the playoffs but we'll see. Shout out to Dame Dollar. Dame Dollar dropped 71 last night, Portland. And that kid was always good. I watched him grow up in Oakland playing when I was in the Bay Area. He was always a good little solid player, man. It just, he went to Weaver State and people didn't really know who he was. Here's his was our, our, with the irony of I'm not getting a little bit off base, so we're talking about guns, but here's what's crazy about the NBA and, the, and some of their best players. Yo, a lot of them either came internationally over here now, the best ones, like say the Disco top 10 players in the NBA. Uh, they either came from Europe or they went pro ball and then went pro or they went to some smaller colleges. And so, like, for example, like Steph Curry went to Davidson. You know, Clay Thompson went to Washington State. Uh, Dame, Dame Dollar went to Weber State. Uh, you know, like Luka, straight out of Europe. Jokic, straight out of Europe. Kyrie, they say Duke, but if you know Kyrie's history, that kid only played about 15 games total at Duke. He was he played, he was there only one year. So if you want to count him as a Duke alumni, go for it. But 20 games, I don't know how much of an alumni you are. So I'll just give him some examples. Some of these kids, they don't come out in all these big schools like they used to. But when I, came, I mean, I came out of high school in 87, and everybody went to Power 5 conferences just to make it to, to, the, big, to the NBA. So anyway, that's what I got for you. Shout out to Dame Dollar, man. Said he won, and the way he did it was very efficient. 13 for 22 from three-point land, that's killing it, man. Uh, but anyway, so let's get into an ammo, man. Uh, hold on, cleaning. I'm gonna say, man, what to use to clean your guns? I got all this cleaning shit. I think I showed them that video before. But this is all I really use. I got in this bag because you know it's all oiling and stuff. But this is all I use. These two items right here. I use this at the very end for key parts. That's why it's over the two years old. That's all that's been used. And this is over a year and a half old. It's still got some in here. Yeah. That's all I use, these two right here, man. Just ain't gonna make a long story short, that's it. I got a whole bunch of other stuff, hops, all this lubricating oil, all this stuff. That, I use these two right here. And I use it li generously, not, I mean, liberally, not, I use it sparingly. But like I said, all my pistols are clocked, so they don't require that much love, you know? <laughs> hey, that's the beauty about it. Matter of fact, what's my, what I'm packing today? I only got one today. Glock 29, let's unload it. So yeah, Glock 29 today. And so they run great. They don't need a lot of oil. It's, it's actually oil. You can feel a little bit of it, but not heavy oil. 
Uh, when I do clean, I just do a basic clean. You know, I don't do crazy. I just do this. That's it. I just take these three out. And you can see a little carbon on my finger, so this one's kind of a little dirty. And I clean, that's a little dirty too right there, but you know, because that, you can be a little cleaner. That plunge can be a little cleaner. But I just clean this, clean that, hit those, those key parts, boom, 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 hit that up. You know, get up in there and get a little bit of that area. I don't take the uh, trigger out that much. I kind of just clean around it. And I'll go do, I do a deep cleaning, which means I'll take every single part off this lower, and I'll take all the internals out, firing pin, plunger, all that extractor, get all up in there. That's called a deep clean, I'll do that like periodically throughout the year. But for the most part, just it's just like spread oil, let it sit for 30 minutes, get oil on everything inside the barrel, everything, get everything oiled up good. Uh, I don't use the oil to spray, I just wipe it with the oily top, uh, oily uh, thing, I, but I don't do anything with that. Then uh, yeah, just get it all oiled up good and let it sit there for about 15, 20 minutes or until I forget about it. And then I come back, brush it with a, with a brush, brush it with a brush. And then I wipe all that out, and then I lightly lube it again. And I take that little needle nose, and hit like little pins, and you know that's it. And hit a little bit on the rail, put it back together, sh -sh -sh rack it, and that's my cleaning. I don't, so it's not nothing spectacular. Um, I, I be seeing people doing cleaning videos, and I just be cracking up, man. Like they be going crazy. But that's why I like Glock. You know, you don't have to really over clean it, clean them. You know. I, mean, I know guys got Glocks and they never clean them. When they open them up, they like black carbon all over the place and no failure to feeds. So all the other guns are, guns are pretentious. You don't got to do shit with Glock, just give it ammo. So that's what I got for you. Glock 29, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm rocking this. I'm walking around the house in the daytime when I get home and all that kind of stuff. And then at night I switch that out and go with the uh, Glock 21. But yeah, so I saw somebody say, say, oh, 22 LR, man. Look, dude, let me tell you something real quick. 22 LR, nobody wants to get shot by anything, but I can promise you it's a high velocity cartridge. It will kill you. Now, somebody with, with, with adrenaline all doped up or something on some fucking angel dust or some shit all dr drinking liquor all day yeah he might run through that because it's been cast been, been shot by nine and 40 and still come charging because they got so much shit in their system but a regular human not on no shit you're going down with a 22 if it hits you there was a video out recently like a year ago a guy went to it i don't know if y'all seen that video it was in texas where the dude was going to pick up his daughter or find out where his daughter was or pick her up or something like that He's, he's, he's uh, separated from his from his, uh, his the, the kid's mom, and she has a boyfriend, and she's been messing with him after all the story came out. And uh, he went to the house and trying to, you know, well, why you lie to me? She's not here, and all this kind of stuff. And dude went and got a twenty two rifle, came out, get off my porch, and all that kind of stuff. And dude was trying to grab the gun, and boom, pushed him off and popped him like, I think gave him a double tap or one tap, and he went down. He was dead, and with a twenty two LR. So don't let nobody fool you. Twenty two hour will get the job done. So. And I like it because the ammo is cheap, and you know, if you buy some quality 22 uh, firearms, you, you, it's not as many jams as, as people make it out to be. I, I, I'm gonna I'm give you some facts on mine in a minute, but let me just talk about the ammo for a second. So, uh, you know, they get through some ammo cans. I got Sheffield ammo cans. I got about five of these for different purposes and whatnot. And uh, I got these on sale at my gun store when they were on sale for like, I think it was five ninety nine or something like that. So I like Sheffield, you got, you got two holes for you to put locks right there or put a lock. I usually put a lock right there. I don't put the locks on there. But, uh, so let me show you with ammo. I, this is what I, I, I shoot the same ammo. I don't really venture out. And, I try so much ammo and then once I find out what I like, that's it, I just go back and get that ammo. So I don't know how y'all do it. Just buy whatever out there, whatever cheap. I don't do that shit. The only thing I do that with was Glock. So if I'm buying nine millimeter ammo, I don't give a shit what it is. My Glock is gonna eat it. If it's Glock, that's why I only got Glock gun. I can go buy any Ford Fiaci, Blazer, Lawman, CCI, PMC, whatever. It just, it, it's never gonna jam with the Glocks. So, but with the 22 LR, not so much. So my number one go-to ammunition is the uh, 22 LR CCI. And you see how it says target. So when you buy this ammo, these are all different models. They got Varmint, they got Stinger, they got uh, a couple of them. This is target, but I usually buy Varmint, to be honest with you, which is the hollow points. The hollow points run better 
these don't jam or anything wrong. It's just because it, these are 40 grain. So in my personal opinion, see, these are 40 grain. So my personal opinion, I believe that I'm speaking for myself. My 22 LRs run the best off CCI Varmint Mini Mag. I'm not saying Target don't run good because obviously I got it, but I think when I went in there they didn't have it. So but I still buy CCI, but the Varmint, and I believe it's not 40 grain. It's it's a uh, it's 38 grain. So my 22 LRs like 38 grain better than 40 grain. So this is my number one go-to ammo. And then this is my number two, and this is the PowerPoint. I think these are hollows, though. Let me see. The PowerPoints, are they hollow? Yeah, they, they hollow tip. I don't know if I can see that. <clears throat> but they hollow tip, and these run pretty good this is this is not as quality as a cci in my personal opinion but i buy them because they run good i pick up a couple of jams in the beginning but it, it's not like enough to consider it jams all the time and these are 40 grain too so these are uh see these are 1280 feet per second this is 1235 so the hotter it gets the hotter the ammo like meaning like fast it gets and the higher grain for my 22s not everybody's it doesn't run as good so the optimum for, for mine is a uh, 38 grain, a little under, uh, I wanna say 11 to 1200 feet per second. And that seems to be like zero jams and just runs good. It'll still get the job done whatever you're shooting. Like when I go hunting, I, 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 that 22, I like that because you know, it's good for rabbits and birds and stuff like that, whatever you got. But So this is my number two, the, the Winchester Super X. So that's my number two go-to. I don't have no number three. That's it, one and two. I'll tell you what I don't like. And I had this for almost two or three years. I got this up in Wyoming, I think. I don't know where I got this from, but I I don't know, man. I, someone gave it to me or something. It, I'd say, man, you got some 22 we're shooting or something. And I think this is in Wyoming, man. I don't know where I got this from, but it's Federal and it's 22 LR and it's that 40 grain. And I remember when he gave it to me, I, I was like, this motherfucker, man. I, 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 this is why I don't like it. Dude, I don't shoot lead in my 22s, okay? It will run, it will run, and I got a whole bunch of it left. This is a 275 box. This is a 222 round box, and this is only like $13 or something like that. And this is 100 rounds, and this is $6.99. So, but this stuff right here, I mean, like I said, it will run. If, I, if it's all I had, I would shoot it, but I, since I have options, I don't fuck with it. And I just don't like it because your guns get totally dirty, man. And like that lead is just terrible. And then the more you shoot it, it gets more build up faster. So that's why I don't fuck with that. So that's what I got for that. Now let's get into the guns. So that's why everybody was really here. Um, shout out Black History Month, man. One more day. Uh, very proud to be an African American. Uh, yeah, we have problems and things go go wrong, and we you know we all know the past, the history, the present, and. But I'm still proud to be who I am, and I'm, I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be part of the, the working class. I'm not a felon. I have never been arrested. I don't, I have, I don't do anything to break the law. I, when I was a kid, I was a knucklehead. Did a couple knuckle, dead knucklehead things. Oh, yeah, I broke the law when I was a kid for sure. I just never got caught. I mean, so when I got closer and closer, I used to always push it and push it and push it. And then when people started getting killed and, and, and overdosing it, and stuff like that, and getting incarcerated, can't go play basketball no more. And that's when I started moving away from that. But I would play, I would, I would go right up to the edge because a lot of my friends, we went, a lot of us wasn't perfect. But if anybody can relate with that, your friends are still your friends. And I think a lot of times when adults are trying to discipline kids and try to educate them, they keep forgetting that kids are kids. And so their friends are their friends. So that's where more mentorship and more leader, more programs and stuff, I think, could help the youth out. So. Very proud to be African American. A lot of things to be proud of. A lot of good people in our culture, despite what the media and televisions and the rap music, and the drill music, and all the ignorant stuff that they, you know, that our people willingly go into. I'm not going to say no one forces them. No one says you have to do drill music, drill rap. No one says you have to, you know, walk around with your pants sagging. That, that nowhere says that. Nowhere written says that. And so. We need to go back to being more proudful and all that kind of stuff. But man, to try to change it overnight, it's gonna be rough. So I just try to do my part. And when I get around other cultures and people, I try to represent how they 
So if they see me, the last image they got is of me, then we good as a culture, because I'm not displaying no ignorant shit in the public, to no race, not just white people, to anybody. So I, I'm not, I'm always gonna represent my mom first, rest in peace to my mom, make believe. Uh, I'm always gonna represent my mom, my brothers them first. I, a lot of y'all, I love y'all, but y'all don't matter to me, what you think of me. What mattered always to me is what my mom thought of me. So that's what I got for that. So let's get into some guns. So I'm gonna start off with uh, my pistol. Uh, so this is my uh, GSG. A lot of y'all seen it, but I want to do this again because I saw some. There's a lot of 22 uh, videos coming up right now, and so it is clear. There's no mag in it. Uh, nothing in that thing. So this thing is pretty cool. A uh, little under 350 California price. It was like I don't know 319 dollars, and then with all that FFL taxes, you know, it goes up. Uh, very smooth shooting pistol. It's in the same uh, platform as the 1911, which I really dig because if I was to buy another pistol, it's going to be a 1911 because I really want one, but I don't want to settle, if y'all know what I mean. So I went to a, the opportunity come when I get a little bit more money in my pocket. Go get a real high quality 1911. Um, from what I hear, they're getting better though, as far as the price is going down, but the quality is still up, but I still want to give me a quality one so yeah this is the GSG American tactical uh, 1911 California compliant you'll see the big fat CA on the side of it uh, GSG is German sport gun a lot of markings all this thing as you can see like the, the label name all that shit and these are like the takedown pin this is how you take it down with those pins and that's another thing about 1911 I see already it's the same platform from what I understand so it ain't gonna be no different from a real 1911 there's a lot of little steps to, to taking the slide off. You gotta like pop all these damn pins off and then move that little thing right there. Slide that over and push this down and do all that. Y'all saw what I did to the Glock. I thought, I was on me, huh? You <laughs> saw what I did to the Glock, took that thing down in, thir in what, nine seconds? Man, you ain't taking this down in no nine seconds. So, but but shooting though, I don't just saw my wife, she was killing it with this one. All right, a target up, that thing was all in the middle. A shots, boom, boom, yeah, sweet. You know, like, you know, ambidextrous safety. Like I said, I got Glock. Um, I ain't used to that. But we have just three safeties on Glock. You know, people keep saying there's no safeties on Glock. Yes, it is. It's three. But no external thumb safety. That's all. But it runs great. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this this rod and this barrel, this, this rod is plastic and the spring there. There's a, there's a kit you can buy that you can put up in there. And I heard that it, it really makes the shots flat because you put the heavier guide rod in. I'm not taking it apart. If it was Glock, I would, but your guide rod, it's a, it comes with a cheap ass guide rod. But all the parts inside of this thing is solid. It's just the parts that don't matter. They, they, they cinched out on, and it's, it's like a steel frame. So this, this ain't like no Glock with a polymer bottom. bottom. It's, it's got weight on it. So that's why the shots are so flat because it's 22, so there's no recoil and it's heavy. So got the nice little sights on it. Yeah, I know I might be flying. I flag myself, it looks like it, but I'm not. Got the nice sights on there, adjustable too, so pretty neat, you know. You got that thumb safety back here, all this weird shit on these things. I'm so I'm not used to that. That's crazy. Got to have pressure on there to make it fire. But, uh, shit, man, this motherfucker, it's, it, I got to get a holster for it. Because if I go to the woods and stuff, I'm definitely going to have this on me. But I was thinking about buying a buck mark. Because my, my son lives in Alaska, and he said that all the, the guys who have 22 pistols, they all have buck marks, stainless steel. A lot of these guns in a lower 48, they won't let hold up. I ain't gonna say Glock will, but I don't know about all these cheap ass guns because the weather up there just beats shit up. And I know it's all the guys have like stainless steel rifles and pistols and stuff that they all, like, all their other barrels are all marked aftermarket and stuff. I don't know what that's all about, but when you live in San Diego, you ain't got to worry about too much bad weather under the rain. But yeah, man, this is a really good shooting pistol, man. And uh, let's talk about the mags. Uh, so, the mags is pretty, pretty cool too. Now the catch with the GSG mags, so, it comes with one. It comes with one of these right here, the metal mags. And they're 10 rounders, California compliant. But if you see it's an orange follower, I swapped the orange follower, I gave it a plus four. I don't care if ATF listen, plus four. But I only have 10 in there, so I only load 10. But, because when I put when I put the uh, 14 in there, it, two jams every time. I think I told somebody about that. 
And uh, so that's why I, don't, I only run, I can run 10 or 12 sometimes, but it runs better with 10. And uh, yeah, it fits flush and just drops clean, goes in there. I mean, it's a, yeah, I love the metal mags because you know the Glock mags are all polymer. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's nice, man. And then I got uh, four of them. So I come with one and I bought three. So, so if you guys buy this, you know, prepare to buy some more mags because I, I don't care what stage you're in, I think they only come with one. And I got the followers and the mags uh, off, off this site. It's a, it's a guy named in uh, North Carolina that sells the mags. And when you buy them, make sure you don't buy the Firefly ones with this. Make sure you get the exact one of this model. Like, so if you buy the GSG 1911, buy the GSG 1911 mags, even though people are gonna tell you, oh, the Firefly, they, their mags work on it too. Well, I heard otherwise, so I didn't take no chances. I bought exactly what the, what the, the manufacturer suggests. So, so yeah, that's the GSG 1911, man. Pretty fucking nice gun. Yep, that's it, that's it. All right, so let's move on to the next gun. Now, this was my first 22 LR rifle purchase. As you can see, uh, the MMP 1522, 22 LR. I said, y'all can see that. 1522 LR. And, uh, you know, this is, I put that, I swapped the grip out. This is Mission First Tactical MFT. I don't know if you can see that right there. Mission First Tactical. And I put that grip on there. I had this grip on my AR, but then I swapped it out for a Magpul because I wanted everything was Magpul except the grip. And I thought, like, man, that's kind of stupid. Why don't I just get a Magpul grip? And then it came with a little cap for the bottom of the Magpul grip where you, you can put extra bullets or, you know, paracord or whatever you want, a lighter. I don't know what the hell you want to put up in there. But my buddy at, from the gun shop gave me this vertical grip. So when I bought it, he was like, oh, man, I, I, got, I was going to buy a vertical grip. He said, I got one. You can have, you can have my old one. So he gave me this one. It's pretty cool. Got a little storage compartment. Oh, I forgot. And I stashed some extra rounds in there. I might have to shoot these up. They've been there for a while. But yeah, it's like 10 rounds shoved up in there. So you can put anything you want in there. But all these little compartments, I usually put ammo up in there. Because I got a little bag and kit for supplies and stuff. So I didn't never really see the purpose of putting anything else up in there. But all my little caps on my grips and stuff, they all have ammo. Like my KSG, I have a, I have a slug up in. Oh no, I have a double R buck up in there, and a couple other ones have the other. They have ammo in it. But yeah, he gave me that, you know. And I got this little cheap Amazon scope with a. Uh, it's got, it's got a laser on it. I don't know if you can see that. See that green laser. So that's pretty cool. Got a little flashlight. Uh, not super high power batteries might be dead, but there you go. It's iron. Flashlight. I thought I had like a scroll. Maybe not. And a little red dot. Let me see if I can get that red dot on. Oh, that's a green dot. I don't know if I can see it though. It's a green dot. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, and I got this off Amazon. Green dot, red, uh, green dot uh, with the laser. And it works really good. I mean, the gun's already accurate out the box, to be honest with you. You don't even need to put an optic on this. You can just go with these Magpul flip-up sights. And uh, they don't co-witness. You can see that it doesn't co-witness. But yeah, you don't even really, uh, you don't even need no optic on this 22. This is good to have because this makes it easier. Because you're probably just shooting just messing around, or a rabbit or squirrel or something. Then I put another aftermarket uh, charging handle because the one it came with was a cheap plastic one. I tried to get the MMP one. Man, you ain't gonna believe this. They was trying to charge, but the MMP actually makes us ambidextrous uh, charging handle. Them motherfuckers wanted like some retarded ass price for it. I wanna say damn near $69, man. I know y'all think I'm lying, but I think it was. So I went and bought this one from Next Level Armament. Uh, next level, next level armament, and I got it for, uh, I don't know, 39, something like that, can't remember what it was, but it wasn't no 59, 69, and I just got a little, 
I got a couple of these little cheap slings off Amazon. I'm gonna eventually upgrade all my slings, not on my 22, but on my AR. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go high tactical, expensive sling. Uh, get get some more information from some guys I know. But for now, you should always have a, a sling on all your rifles. In case some shit hit the fan, you gotta go. You can just start slinging up your rifle, throw them on your shoulders and get the hell out. And that's why I got it. So it came with a little adjustable stock. You know, so it came with that, and uh, that's pretty much it, man. 22 LR. I mean, this thing is fucking badass, dude. I love this thing, super accurate. And so, I shot a lot through this. This thing has a man, this thing got about I don't know, like 2,000 rounds to it, 3,000. So, I love this gun, very accurate, man. Super fun. Like you said, got the flashlight, little tactical. You, you know, I don't put too much on my guns. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this optic, but nothing wrong with it. I, I might, if I get another one, I'll, I'll show you the one I might get, and then I might just give this away to somebody. I'm not really big on the laser thing. I'm super old school, in case you haven't picked up. That shit don't really, I don't need no damn laser, but why you want a laser? Probably at night, if you were gonna be going through a dark hallway, something like that, I guess, and laser, I don't know. I'm sure it's tactical, but uh, you know, 22 LR probably won't be trying to save the world with this, but and that front side is adjustable, so back side adjustable too. So yeah, MMP, MMP, 1522. So that's that one, and uh, here's my other one again, the GSG. So you got. The big brother and the little brother, you know what I'm saying? You got the GSG 22LR rifle and a GSG 22 1911 pistol. So I was figure, what the hell? You already got the pistol, go ahead and get the... Oh, hold on, I forgot. So the ammo, y'all know what I run. So this, on this one, it comes with one mag. It come with, and it actually came with 25 rounder accidentally. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but you know, this is a 25 rounder. It didn't come, actually, no, it didn't come with this one. It came with the other one, but this one I got from Freedom Week. So, not worried about it, but that's how that looks. But I only shoot 10 out of it though. And then I got this one. So, that's how that. Same thing, same mag. This is the, one, the California compliant one because. They do something to the spring where you can't lower to put more rounds in it. And uh, then I, the other ones they have that are pretty neat. I like these actually better. Cause I'll show you why. I'll show you why I like these better. I will show you why. So if you notice, so you see how long that hangs down, like kind of like an AR. That was the other reason why I bought it, because it's in the same platform as my AR-15. So I practiced with this. I got the same controls, the same feel, function. So when I go to the uh, AR, I don't have to recreate the wheel. But see how that sticks out like a 30? Well, since, I was in, since I'm in California, even though I wasn't in California, I probably still will rock these as these little mini ones, these little mini Smith & Wesson 22 LR. These are 10 rounders. Now look at that. We got short that is now. So like if you was in a tight little quarter trying to hunt a little rabbit or something, you got that big ass thing hanging out. You see what I'm saying? So that's a shorter profile. So I went and bought a couple more. So I have three of those. Cause you need a lot, man, in California, when you shoot 22, you need a lot of mags because you only get the 10 rounds. So this is like 30 rounds. This is like 40 rounds. And this one's like 50 rounds. So that's the only catch in California with 22 LR. It's really nice if you could have more rounds a couple like a couple if you had like three or four 25 rounders that would just get you to get it done but until then that's what you got to do you just got to work around what you have and uh so that's the mags on this all right and the gsg so it comes with uh gsg comes with one of these little 10 rounders and this is how this works that's how that looks. So what you do have in the free states, you have these 22 rounders. This is 10 in here though, and that's how that looks. 
So, you know, and they've got that little compartment back here where you can store, you know, a mag or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And it's got the adjustable stock. If someone can help me, I find it really weird. Why is there a Picatinny rail right there? What the fuck are you gonna do with that? Like, I don't, what are you gonna do there? Put an optic right there or some shit? Like, what the hell? I don't know. Maybe for us, if you wanted to put a sling on, I guess, you can put a mount there and have a sling, but it's, all, it's gonna be on the top, so I don't know why that would work. But anyway, out of the box, this thing is super accurate. Super accurate, it has the MP5 slap. See that? That's that. You know, ambidextrous safety. Both sides. It came with sights on the front and rear. Uh, around the box, you don't need, you don't need an optic on this. Uh, again, uh, this gun does not require a sight. Out of the box, these work fine. They're adjustable. But I just wanted an optic anyway. So I'll, I'm thinking about putting an optic like this on my 22 to lower the profile. And uh, this has a great, it has a several reticles on here. Let's see here. Battery die on this thing? Do I have it on? Oh no. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. So, oh, this is the one that only has red. I'm moving away from red. Because I like the green. So, let's see if you can pick that up. See that? Uh, Red. So yeah, it has that. This is by Fiaci. Okay, now it's off. Yeah, so this is by Fiaci. Pretty good, man. This is super accurate. I put this uh, talon grip on here. I did it myself. And obviously, it's peeling off right there. You can see it's all good. 22. But yeah, and I put this little light right there. Yeah, just a little light, just something to have, you know. And, uh, yeah, German sport gun. This thing is an excellent, fun shooter. My wife loved it. She shot it really good. So I like it too. And so that's what I got. 22s, man. Um, like I said, if you have an AR-15, I suggest this one. Same platform as your AR. And if you just don't have one and you want to get something that's light and small. Uh, so you see the difference in the height. Put the barrel shroud on here to make this California compliant. But yeah, um, if you're looking for two 22 rifles, I, I suggest these right here. I know you got the Rossies and all those, those are good too. Ruger makes a good one, you know, but I like the Smith & Wesson and I like the GSG. So that's what I got for the 22 guys. That's it on that one. Very nice, 22 are fun, they're efficient and they can be home defense. Uh, you would just have to figure out what type of ammo are you going to use and get them all dialed in. Maybe you have to swap out a couple parts to make sure they don't. But using a 22 is going to come down to your gun being clean and the ammo you're using. So you got to figure out what ammo the gun likes the best. That's the only caliber that is, is very frustrating when you first buy it. Once you figure it out, then you're good. But it'll drive you crazy with all the jams. And then you, you, you have to move away from the gun, thinking that the gun has a problem, and move toward what am I doing wrong or what ammo am I putting in there and then that'll uh, help you figure that problem. Let's talk about these for a minute. So people, somebody else, I never saw somebody in video, some video, somebody, he said, man, I don't know what this is for. He just, he said, I throw, I throw those things away. Uh, these these are uh, loaded chamber indicators, uh, or is it in, empty chamber indicators? Loaded chamber indicators, right. And so these are, are kind of like necessary when you go to gun ranges for competition, because when you bring your gun out there, they want you to, they want to see the, the loaded chamber indicator in there. So it, it looks like this in case someone, if you know this, then this is nothing big to you, but just the fact that I saw it, I'm just pretty sure most people don't know. Oh, you gotta find the right caliber. So no, that's the wrong gun. This is the one, this is for this one, I think. Yeah, so. So it's like that. And so when you walking on or walking to your station in a, in a competition shooting or something like that with a rifle, they'll know that this gun is not loaded because you have that, that 
chamber indicator. And that's why when they sell them, they come in there like that in the box. So don't throw those away. You never know, you might need them for some kind of compliancy. I think this one is for the KSG. I think this is, yeah, Keltec. You can see Keltec. So this one came on a KSG shotgun, and this one is on, come from my, oh, that's from my AR, uh, DPMS. And then the uh, Smith & West one somewhere around. But that's what those are for. So don't throw those away, keep them, you never know. Well, guys, I'm gonna let you guys get out of here. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, supporting the channel. Again, if you just saw this video, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Anything I did wrong, I'm good. I ain't really no expert, you know, just having fun. Uh, again, I got the, some desert uh, training coming up. And we'll be having some more, uh, some, my next level of videos will be mostly shooting and stuff like that and showing you my training and all that. But you can be shocked, I've been doing it. Man, my drawing is good, man. I, I, my, man, I got it going on from, from the, the drop leg here, here. I've been working on all these draws, man, and right hand draw too. I'm, I'm doing right hand draws now, coming out, boom, boom, it's coming out. So I hope you guys are doing the same, man. Like, you never know your strong hand might get hurt and then you stuck. Now, I will say something about the 1911s. They don't have no rails for lights. Not that, you know, not that I have a lot of lights on my guns, but it'd be just nice to know you can put a light on there. But other than that, still like it. It's not gonna kill me, and I, I guess these holsters are all over the place when someone told me it's not hard to find a 1911 holster. And you change out the grips to different colors and whatnot. Uh, like I said, it's GSG, the paint job is cheap. You can see how it's chipped off right there. So if you get these, you wanna keep it pressed clean. Don't put it against metal, because it will chip it. So, but yeah, that's what I got, guys. Um, again, you guys stay safe, you know, support your channel. Uh, my cash app is dollar sign. Mbreezy619, it is under my description when you drop down my name. Boom, you'll see like supporting two way. Click on there, you'll see the cash app. So, if y'all want to donate so I can get some more ammo and stuff like that, I will do it. I got some giveaways coming up. I got a, I got a scope, a, a optic, a, a light. I got a couple of things I'm gonna give away. So, I'm trying to build my channel up. To, so, if I get to get the 500, I'm gonna get to a giveaway. I'm at, I don't know where I'm at now, but I'm trying to get the 500. So, Support your boys, support Mark Breezy, eyes and ears tackle. Always have your eyes, always have your ears. Stay armed, stay safe, stay ready, stay dangerous, stay on high alert. Respect everyone in the two-way community. God bless you. Have a good evening.